Hi, my name is Luke Benick with 3Helix, and in this short video I'm going to give you guys an introduction into collagen hybridizing peptides, give an overview of how they work, uh, generally how to use them, as well as an overview of some applications they might be useful for. Now we have other videos on the website that go into more detail about these specific applications, so feel free to check them out. So to begin with, collagen is the most abundant protein in the body, and it's found throughout the body, including your bones, your blood vessels, your organs, your skin, etc. And collagen is a major component of the extracellular matrix, which you can think of as kind of a scaffolding for the cells. So because it's a major component of the ECM, it's involved with cell proliferation, differentiation, as well as cell-cell signaling. Now in natural tissue homeostasis, you know, ECM remodeling and collagen synthesis and degradation is very tightly controlled. But excessive collagen remodeling is often an indicator of diseases such as cancer, fibrosis, and arthritis. So this begs the question of if there's a lot of excess collagen in these disease states, how can we assess the ECM damage caused by diseases at the molecular level? So to answer this question, we focused on studying the collagen molecule. Now this is, made, this is a unique structure that's actually made up of three separate alpha chains that can assemble together to form a collagen triple helix through interchain hydrogen bonding. Now this secondary, uh, super secondary structure is found almost exclusively within the collagen superfamily, which contains up to 28 different types of collagen. Now the triple helical collagen is resistant to most enzymes and proteases. Uh, except for there's a special family of proteases known as matrix metalloproteinases that are able to cleave the collagen triple helix uh, into two smaller pieces. It's roughly a one quarter length and a three quarter length. Now upon cleavage, these two smaller sections of the collagen molecule start to spontaneously denature at body temperature and they will begin to unwind um, and come apart. Now, there's been a lot of good research done, especially by the Zena Werb Lab, that shows that remodeling the extracellular matrix uh, occurs during development and diseases, such as, like I said, the diseases listed uh, previously, as well as uh, organogenesis, embryogenic stuff. Um, so it's actually very um, unique in the sense that it's found in both development and diseases. Um, so this, this unfolded collagen could be a potential biomarker for disease and development. So the first thing we wanted to know is how can we detect unfolded collagen remodeling in tissues? So if you look at this cartoon, we have an intact collagen molecule. It's in a triple helical form. And upon tissue damage, collagen remodeling, mechanical overloading, or even chemical denaturation, this triple helix begins to unfold and unwind. Now, previously, researchers have used an indirect method, such as ELISA-type assays or zymography, in order to capture and identify these smaller collagen strands. Uh, more recently, researchers have used a more direct method for targeting areas where there's unfolded or denatured collagen. Now, these methods include antibodies raised against them, uh, small peptides derived from phage display, and also small molecules produced for these target sites. Now these three methods have been rarely successful due to the fact that an unfolded or denatured collagen does not present a defined 3D epitope that most targeting approaches use. Uh, additionally, the smaller peptides and small molecules have varying degrees of affinity. So this makes it hard for widespread use, um, as well as the antibodies are very specific for a certain collagen type, such as type 1, type 2, or type 4. Um, and again, they lose affinity, and it's hard to recognize an unstructured um, 3D, excuse me, an unstructured protein. So we developed a collagen hybridizing peptide. Now, our collagen hybridizing peptide is based on the fact that there is a high content of glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline found in natural collagen. So our short peptide sequence is a repeating of nine repeat units containing this sequence. Now. This is important because these three amino acids allow us this peptide to reform the collagen triple helix with the highest propensity. So what we were able to do is we were able to attach fluorescent molecules or biotin molecules onto our short peptide sequence, and then we can actually apply it to tissue sections or gelatins, and what we see is our CHPs are able to hybridize and refold with this damaged 
um, collagen strands on the tissue section as well as in gelatin. So if you take a look at this collagen fiber, once it gets degraded by MMPs, you have a lot of this single-stranded CH or single-stranded collagen available for binding. And with our CHP, we can apply it, and they will refold either one CHP with two collagen strands, or two CHPs with one collagen strand. And if you take a look back at our previous example, we it works by strand invasion and reforming that collagen triple helix. So again, we have natural intact collagen. Once it gets damaged, it begins to unfold, and then our small CHP can go in and rehybridize, forming that triple helix. Now, this method is similar to the way that DNA primers bind to DNA during PCR. And because collagen sequences is preserved throughout the collagen types, uh, throughout species, and throughout the tissue types, our CHP can actually target uh, the entire collagen family, regardless of the species and regardless of the tissue type. So if you wanted to use our CHPs, um, there's a few things that you need to know. So when we ship you guys the CHPs, it's in powder form and it's most likely in a triple helical formation. Therefore, in order to use it, you have to heat it up in order to get this single-stranded CHP. Now, when it's in a single-strand formation, CHPs are able to bind with and hybridize with the denatured collagen strands. When it's in its triple helical form, it loses its driving force in order to bind, and so therefore it will not target and bind to any denatured collagen strands. Uh, it's important to note that even after you heat it up, uh, after some amount of time, depending on how long you leave it, the CHPs will begin to cool down and they can actually refold into a triple helix with themselves. So upon receiving CHPs, what you want to do is you'll dissolve the CHP powder in either water or PBS. You want to heat the CHP solution to 80 degrees C for roughly five minutes. And then you want to quickly quench your CHP solution um, on, in an ice water bath for roughly 30 seconds. Now this is important because if you want to use it for tissue staining, you don't want to have this hot CHP solution causing damage to your tissue section. That will give you a false positive because it will actually thermally denature any collagen strands within your tissue section. So once you quickly cool down the solution, you can actually apply it onto your slides. So what you want to do is you want to prepare your tissue for staining. Uh, CHPs can work with frozen tissues. Uh, they can also work with formalin fixed and paraffin embedded tissues. You will have to follow the de-paraffinization protocols before staining with CHPs, um, but they work with both frozen and FFPE sections. So you'll prepare your tissue for staining, then you will apply your cooled CHP solution uh, onto your tissue sample and allow it to stain overnight at 4 degrees C. Then what you'll do is you'll wash it out and you can image the slide on a basic fluorescence micro microscope and then you can actually quantify this fluorescence using ImageJ or Fiji. Um, there's another application, actually there's an application note that kind of goes over this image quantification in greater detail so please feel free to check that out. So in conclusion, I hope I've convinced you that CHPs are able to bind to damaged collagen based on the structural recognition of the individual alpha change chains and not a defined epitope like antibodies. CHPs can target regions of damaged collagen regardless of the mechanism, so they can target damaged collagen from mechanical overloading, chemical denaturation, enzymatic degradation, or even thermal damage. CHPs can be used to stain a variety of spe species and tissue types, and this is due to the fact that the collagen sequence is preserved throughout the collagen family as well as throughout the different species. Uh, lastly, CHPs are very easy to use, and you can apply them for histology, immunohistochemistry, tissue engineering, SES page, and even cell migration. And again, these applications can be found on our other videos, so please check those out. Again, my name is Luke Benick, and if you have any technical difficulty or any questions, please feel free to contact me. I also wanted to bring your attention to other members of our team. Uh, Helen Kang will be in charge of shipping and ordering, um, and Dr. Mike Kirkness is in charge of our business development. So if you have any ideas or new applications, please, please, please reach out to him. Uh, we are always open to the idea of working together, and we really want to help uh, progress your research forward. So. Um, that's our team, and we look forward to working for you in the future. Thank you.